going to talk about writer's ignition. It's a common term in social science and here I'm talking about what prompted different uh, people to become writers. Now, um, this is Isaac Asimov's memoir, memoir I Asimov most popular of the series books in my younger days featured the Rover Boys. One of them, the Rover Boys on the Great Lakes, contained a young lady named Dora, who was so primitive an example of love interest that I never noticed. She had an amiable but weak mother who was a continuing victim of an oily con man named Mr. Crabtree. There was also a more vicious pair of villains, father and son. When I started to write, I wrote in direct, even slavish, imitation of this book. I called it Greenville Chums in College. So Asimov wrote Rover Boys on the Great Lakes was his ignition. Uh, this is Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. And this is as good a illustration of this. Uh, there is some ignition event. Preferably you have some co teaching coaches, then you have to work at your craft, whatever it is, and then you develop talent. You may think this is, if this is unknown to you, you may think this is simple and some crackpot. This is universal among educated persons uh, in the science of talent development. Now that's what I worked in. You know, I earned a degree, a bachelor's science degree in human resources management and I worked in talent identification, uh, talent development. Uh, so studying that, of course, I can apply it to writers. Now, there's two kinds of writers, is very uh, clear. There's some who just wrote for money, Lester Dent, Edward Stratmeyer, and Charles Dixon. Now, each of them worked on their craft, but they weren't inspired to write in order to write and improve their craft. They wrote for money. Uh, I was inspired, and I happen to know the exact date, Monday, May 23rd, 1966. My grandmother gave me a copy of Doc Savage, Brand of the Werewolf. That was my ignition. Asimov wrote in his memoir and elsewhere, his ignition was Rover Boys on the Great Lakes by Edward Stratmeyer. Tolstoy, his ignition was David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. It's entirely possible you've read about Tolstoy and either didn't notice that or remained unaware of it. Now, I am not saying you should go out and read Rover Boys or David Copperfield or Brand of the Werewolf. I am saying some of you are interested in writing for money, and some of you had an ignition at some point in your past, and that led you to become interested in writing and to write. For me, 
that was it. it. It was my ignition. After I read Brenda the Werewolf, I wanted to write that type of book. The author of Brenda the Werewolf is this guy, Lester Dent. Image. Now you'll see the book my grandmother gave me. This is not the same book. I gave that to a relative. But it's 45 cents. Bantam book. The Fantastic Adventures of Doc Savage by Kenneth Robeson. Kenneth Robeson was the house name of Street and, Strith, Street and Smith Publications. And this was the Bantam reprint. Let's see, what year did they start reprinting? I think they started in 64. Um, I think this was later. Yeah, reprint, first edition published, or Bantam edition published April uh, 1965, originally published in Doc Savage Magazine, January 1934. Hey, prices went up a little bit later. It went up to 50 cents. And then $12.95. Brand of the Werewolf. That's a reproduction of the original uh, 1934 cover. This was the uh, illustration that was in the 1934 uh, Brand of the Werewolf. This is not in the later ones. Black and white illustration inside the book. This is a telegraphy device. They were ubiquitous back then. Um, in the weird surroundings of the North, they're going to Canada. And so two things I've mentioned, I will explain the background. Lester Dent uh, went to college to make money. He was planning to earn a degree in business and work in banking. Standing in line to enroll, he learned of the telegraphy program. In nine months, he could be a telegrapher and start off making much more, about three times as much as a uh, as he would earn as a you know banking intern when he got out of college. So he became a telegrapher. So telegraphers figure in many, if not most, of his uh, stories. And this is going up to Canada. And the reason why they're going up to Canada, well, he was writing for Street and Smith Publications. They had just made a deal to have Doc Savage magazine published and sold in Canada. So it was not originally going to Canada. So they told him, rewrite your story so that it takes place entirely in Canada. So that's what he did. That's business, difference, art, commerce. There's always a relationship. Now here, Stratmeyer, Rover Boys. Stratmeyer was a prolific and successful writer. Uh, he uh, invented the Rover Boys and the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew. Outlined the initial stories and often would just create outlines and have other writers who work for him write the stories. Uh, he created what was called by others the Stratmeyer Syndicate because he had so many writers working for him on so many different projects. Now, the uh, Rover Boys aged. He decided that was a mistake. So 
When he stopped riding the Rover Boys, Stratmeyer created the Hardy Boys, who would always stay the same age. And, uh, oh, I should have looked that up. Ruth, somebody, he had created a, a woman character who aged. Ruth, oh, I'm embarrassed, I can't remember her last name. And uh, he said, no, he's not going to do that. He's going to create a woman, uh, same, stays the same age, 16, Nancy Drew. Uh, it's going to be some other name, but now I can't remember. So anyway, um, Asimov read The Rover Boys on the Great Lakes and imitated it. And my early writings, I wrote Imitation Doc Savage. Now, this particular one is more of a mystery, but the majority of... Uh, Doc Savage stories, at least the ones that I really noticed, reread, really liked, were false ally thrillers. And in false ally thrillers, uh, when I read uh, The Da Vinci Code, I said, well, this is a standard false ally thriller, just like I've been reading Doc Savage since 1966. Uh, you've got the uh, a character who's probably behind the entire problem that you're addressing, but he's with you as a false ally. For uh, the Da Vinci Code, the teacher was uh, the hero's uh, mentor, and it was actually behind the whole problem. So, uh, uh, that became my ignition. I uh, wanted to write prose fiction, and I have over the years. I've not had as much commercial success with my prose fiction as I have had with my nonfiction. And when I looked at my own development, I said, well, this is a pretty good model. I had Ignition, which was this, my grandmother gave me Brand of the Werewolf. She actually knew Lester Dent and his wife Norma from, met them in Ponca City. Uh, I had some good, I was lucky to have some good English teachers. My uh, freshman English teacher, Bruce Cowdery, my sophomore English teacher, Katie McGroarty. I dedicated my book, Language of Evil, to them. Um, uh, you know, I sometimes give English teachers a hard time, but I honor them when apt, and, and there's no doubt they had a big influence on my life. Sometimes people, you know, younger people that just learned something will say, oh, you got that from Source. And I said, no, I got that from Mr. Cowdery in 1969 or 19, you know, 70, 71. I kept in touch with him for a while, lost touch with him. Of course, this was decades ago. You have to practice, you have to work at your craft, and you may be recognized in various ways for your output, evidence of your talent. So, that's what Lester Dent did. He went in and for the money. Uh, while he's working as a telegrapher in Ponca City, he, uh, one of the other uh, telegraphers on the night shift is typing on the company typewriter. And he asks him what he's doing. And he says, I'm typing a Pulp Fiction story. And he kind of laughed. Is he making money at that? And he says, yeah. And he said, how much? $300. He didn't believe him. That's a tremendous amount in the early 1930s. And he shows him the check. He did make it. So all of a sudden, Lester Dent wanted to be a Pulp Fiction writer. That's it. That was his ignition. He did it for the money. Uh, but he remembered his background, and he often included telegraphers in the stories. And he worked for a company that was interested in making money. So when they said, uh, 
put your setting in Canada. He put his setting in Canada. He had to research Canada. Brand of the Werewolf. Well, that was my ignition. And again, I'm not recommending you read Brand of the Werewolf or write false ally thrillers. But it wouldn't hurt to examine yourself. And if you're writing for, if you had an ignition and you want to be a writer for a certain reason, or if you're just writing for money, either way is fine. I mean, uh, uh, Dad just wrote for money. He improved his craft and he wrote for the Saturday Evening Post. Uh, the other day I saw a um, wagon train television show. And it said at the beginning, it's based on a story by Lester Dent. So your stories can be adapted to other mediums.